Welcome to Wilcom Embroidery Fonts Learning Center, where you will learn creative ways to use your ESA fonts and ESA glyphs. You may be wondering what exactly an ESA glyph is and how do you use it? Well, let's take a closer look at them. When you scroll through the glyph category, you will notice that the ESA glyphs are actually shapes and designs. ESA glyphs are object-based designs that have specific object properties and stitch types assigned to them. ESA glyphs are totally resizable and will not lose their design integrity because they're object-based designs, which can be edited in the Wilcom E or Hatch Embroidery digitizing software. By changing the object properties or stitch types, any design can be stitched at any size with beautiful results. All ESA glyphs are like ESA fonts and they are assigned a keystroke. There's a handy PDF file included in each design pack, which shows you the assigned keystroke with each design. You can either download this or print this out. Now let's see how to use these ESA glyphs in Hatch. Click on the lettering tab. You will notice all the ESA glyphs have a ZZ before their name, and they will be found at the bottom of the ESA font list. It is important to remember to always bring your ESA glyphs into the software at a minimum of 100 millimeters. This is recommended because these glyph designs come in with a lot of objects and if the size was too small there is a chance that your software could lock up or crash. In order to find your glyph in the ESA glyph pack, select the insert character tool and they will all appear on screen. Just simply select the design you'd like and click OK. Because there's so many different styles of ESA glyphs, you always want to double check the satin widths to make sure that they're not too small or large for great stitched out results. The minimum recommended size for a satin stitch is one millimeter. So to check that, let's increase this on screen a bit by selecting design, and then we're going to pull up the grid, left click on it and then right click and we're going to change it to a one millimeter by one millimeter grid and select OK. Now when you zoom in, which control B, you can zoom in and if we turn off the true view, T, you can see that this satin width is two millimeters wide which will make a great stitch out. Now we can have a little fun with this. We'll turn off the grid so we can see the design a little better and we'll turn on true view. The glyphs come into the software as one solid object. When you select the sequence tab, you can see that it is one solid object. But if you'd like to change this object around a little bit, just click on the break apart feature. And now you will see all the individual design components that created this glyph. So let's say you wanted to change this little bird's leg and you could select a new color. Select a new color for the wing or the eye. So you have control over how your little design, little bird is going to look. You want to switch this from a satin stitch to a tatami? You certainly can and come down here and you can switch it to a little bit different pattern. Again, another color as well. Because we've broken apart this glyph into its individual objects, we can also then reshape those objects. So we select it and tap the H on the keyboard for reshape. I can grab several of these nodes by left clicking and dragging. They all turn purple, which means they're selected. And now I can put them in a new position. I can change this curve node to a straight node by tapping the space bar on my keyboard. I can select this circle design and move it over. Move it back over the tail and you've changed the look of the design. We know these satin stitches on this 100 millimeter bird will stitch out beautifully, but what if we wanted to create a bird that was 300 millimeters? Here he is at 300 millimeters. When he's broken apart and the auto split feature is on, you can see that these satin stitches are starting to split, which means it's not going to stitch out very nice. In this case, it would be best to come back in and change this to a tatami type fill or perhaps you could change it to a motif to really change the look. There's lots of creative possibilities. Here's a quick look on different ways you can use ESA glyphs. 
Look for instructions on how to make these in future lessons. Expand your embroidery creativity today by checking out all the amazing ESA fonts, ESA glyphs, FlexiFills, and Quilters collection on WilcomEmbroideryFonts.com. Thanks for watching. If you want to make your embroidery life easier, be sure to hit the subscribe button below to be notified of new tips and tricks videos, giveaways, and more. Plus, if you want to try Hatch Embroidery software free for 30 days, or you already own Hatch and you'd like to download a free ESA font for it, click one of the links in the description below to learn more now. The next step of your embroidery legacy starts here with ours.